This is uh, this is Bhakti Siddhanta's one of his favorite bhajans. Yaso Matti Nandana Prajavaram Nagara Gokula Vaiha Kaha So Matti Nandana Prajavaram Nagara Kukuranja Jajana Falana Sudakula Nasana Rajajana Falana Sudakula Nasana Nandha Gohana Rakko Nanda go dhanna rakko ha 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 Hey Govinda Madhava Namanita Thaskara Govinda Madhava Namanita Thaskara Sundaran Manda Gopa Sundaran Manda Gopa Hey Jamuna Tata Jara Gopi Vasanoran Jamuna Tata Chara, the Gopi Vasanara Rasa Rasika Kripa Moya Rasa Rasika Kripa Moya Sri Radhavalava Vrindavan and Nata Padaya Sri Radhavalava Vrindavan and Nata Padaya Bhakti Vinoda Sraha Sheila Bhakta Tivin Hurrah 
Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hari 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 Yasumati Nandana, Vajibara Naga, Gokula Ranjana, Kana. His mother calls him, Kana, I ain't coming. No way. I'm playing. You want to feed me, but I'm going to play. <laughs> I don't want to eat. I want to play. <laughs> it's Krishna. His mother can never get him in, so she sends Balaram out there, and Balaram tries to bring him back, but doesn't work. And he winds up playing anyway. So, <laughs> what can you do? Krishna is impossible to deal with. Anybody who worships Krishna is completely crazy, <laughs> because you don't know what he's going to do next. <laughs> If you worship Brahm, you're a little bit better off because at least you know he lives according to principles. This Krishna does whatever he wants. <laughs> yeah, so we're, we're really, you know, it's not too late. You guys can change if you want, if you want to worship Sringadev or Ram. No? Nobody's changing? Okay. Good luck. <laughs> we wish you bed the best. <laughs> His cane is crooked. That means you can't trust him. <laughs> he's, uh, and I never know what he's going to do next. He even allows me to give class. You see what he does? He just creates this, you know, all these distress amongst all the devotees. <clears throat> okay, we'll talk about, maybe we won't talk about Krishna today because it's not so good. We might, you know, wind up, you know, being more attached to him if we talk about him, and then we'll be in more trouble. <laughs> what to do? Okay, so Canto Eight, Chapter One: The Manus, the Administrators of the Universe. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. So we'll do verse 17 and 18. 17 is on the board? Or 18? 17. 17? Okay, good. Shri Sukha Uvacha Iti Mantra Upanishadam Vyaharantam Samahitam Drisvasura Yutudana Jagum Abhyadravan Shuddha Shri Sukha Uvacha Iti Mantra Upanishadam Vyaharantam Samahitam Drisvasura Yatudana 
जागुमा व्याद्रवन शुदा श्री सुख उवाचा इति मंत्रोपनिषदम व्याहरंतम समाहितम रस्वसुरायतुदाना जागुमा व्याद्रवन शुदा Shri Sukha Uvacha, Shri Sukha Dev Goswami said, Iti, thus, Mantra Upani Sam, Sadam, the Vedic Mantra, uttered by Swayambhuva Manu, Varharantam, taught or chanted, Samahitam, Samahitam concentrated the mind, mind without being agitated, without being agitated by, material by material conditions. Drisva, Drisva upon seeing, upon seeing him, him, Asura, Asura, Asura the demons, the demons Yatu Dana, Yatu Dana the, Rakshashas, the Rakshashas, Jagum, Jagum desire to devour Abhyadravan, running very fast, Shuddha, to satisfy their appetite. Translation. Sukadeva Goswami continued, Swayam Bhuvamano was thus in a trance, chanting the mantras of Vedic instruction known as the Upanishads. Upon seeing him, the Rakshasas and Asuras, being very hungry, wanted to devour him. Therefore, they ran after him with great speed. Hmm. Text 18. Tamstatavasitam viksya yagna sarva gato harihi yama parivrito devair hatvasa satri vistapam Translation. The Supreme Lord Vishnu, who sits in everyone's heart, appearing as Yagyapati, observed that the Rakshashas and demons were going to devour Swayambhuva Manu. Thus the Lord, accompanied by his sons named the Yamas, and by all other demigods, killed the demons and Rakshasas. He then took the post of Indra and began to rule the heavenly kingdom. <coughs> Very short purport. The various names of the demigods, Lord Brahma, Lord Shiva, Lord Indra, and so on, 
are not personal names. They are names of different posts. In this regard, we understand that Lord Vishnu sometimes becomes Brahma or Indra when there is no suitable person to occupy these posts. Mm. Umagyan timirandasya gena jena salakaya chaksu unmilitam yena tasmai shri garavena maha nama om vishnu vadaya krishna prasthaya bhutale shrimakti bhakti viranta swami dinamine namaste saraswati deve gauravani pacharine nirvisesa sunyavari pasyatya de satarine Pancha kalpa tarubhischa kripa sindhu bebhacha patitanam bhavane vyo vaishnave vyo namaho namaha Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadarha Shri Vasudhi Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Mm. So, <clears throat> so in this verse you'll see how <clears throat> the Lord is protecting his devotee. <clears throat> Swayam Bhuvma, of course, is a very important personality. He is the uh, Manu who rules. There are Manus who rule. There's, I think, 71 Manus in a day of Brahma. Five, 5,000 Manus, I think, in the lifetime of Brahma. They all have their duration of rule. And in each one of and you'll see as the verses go on, in each one of these Manus, there's a particular personality who becomes Indra. There's a particular personality who takes different posts within the universal affairs. So as is mentioned here, that these um, posts and these positions, Brahma, Shiva, uh, Indra, they're positions, they're not names of people <laughs> or personalities. Um, that is in, for the unit. So people qualify. <laughs> it says that if you perform uh, devotional service or if you follow all the rules and regulations of religious principles for 100 births, you can get the post of Lord Brahma. That's if you want it. <laughs> and I think Lord Shiva, it's a little bit harder to get. He's even more, takes a little bit, many more births. So uh, one can qualify. One can become Lord Brahma. One can become Lord Shiva. One can become you know, Lord Indra. <clears throat> of course, for one who is engaged in devotional service and understands the, the purpose of devotional service, they don't aspire for any material situation. They simply see these things as just a diversion from the real goal of life. Hmm. But there are living entities who have this tendency to like to control we fall to this material world because we have two characteristics that are really exclusive for the Supreme Lord, and that is the desire to enjoy, the desire to control. And in order to enjoy, you have to have some facility to control. So we see that those persons who are managing the universe and there's demigods in every universe. There are different personalities. The posts are practically the same, but the personalities are different. And what is their service? They serve the Lord by managing the universal affairs. They have to make sure that everything goes on according to religious principles. And when things get out of line, <laughs> they try to settle it. If they can't settle it, then they go to Indra, and, they, and then Indra comes and he can't settle it. He goes to Brahma. When Brahma can't fix it, when he gets so far, when the demons become so prominent, like during the advent of Lord Krishna, we saw that the uh, demons had taken control of all power with all within the universe. And so 
even Brahma didn't have the power to reverse that. So he had to go to Krishna. And Krishna came and Yada Yada Yadharma Shyada Claudia Bhavati Bharata. So the Lord came to reestablish religious principle. But this is not really the Lord's principle. He he can do that easy, just like uh, when demons come. It's not that he has to come to kill the demons. He probably said he can just create a big wind and then they're finished. <laughs> some cyclone and they all go flying around and they're gone, you know. So for Krishna, to, you, to he can use his the material energy to somehow or other dispense with the demons. But he does come only to satisfy his devotees and to bring them closer to him in devotional service. That's why the Lord actually appears, and killing the demons and reestablishing religious rule in the in the world is secondary. And so when he comes to give pleasure to his devotees, he also does that too. You'll see, when Krishna was in Vrindavan, he stayed there for how many years? He stayed there for about ten and a half years. After, at the age of ten and a half, Krura comes, takes Krishna out of Vrindavan on the request of Kamsa. Kamsa is harassing. He's harassing everybody, Vasudev, Devaki, everyone. He's just, this is the business of the demons. We also see that here. You know, Swayam Bhuvamano, he's a saintly person. And he's in charge of, to man, man, help to manage the universal affairs. What is he doing? He's simply meditating on the Upanishads, which are the essence of the Vedas. And the Rakshasas and the Suras, they appear. And they just, they're hungry. And they see it looks like a nice, you know, gigantic pakora. So they want to chase after him and, and dip it into some, you know, tomato chutney. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and uh, that's the blood. <laughs> so, uh, and uh, this is what they do. This is um, demons, rakshasas, a whole set of uh, living entities. Their simple business is to cause difficulty to others. As Srila Prabhupada said, we have no problem with Maya. Maya is our friend. But because there are demons, she has to serve the demons, and therefore there are so many problems in the world. Yeah. And this is Prabhupada's statement regarding to, you know, the situation. So that the difficulties are going on in the world today is simply due to the demons, that's all. And they come in different forms, and they simply cause trouble to others, and so They just want to usurp the material energy for their own sense gratification, and whoever is in their way, they arrange to get rid of them. <laughs> this is a demon. And demons are eternal. As long as the material energy is here, the demons are also here. There are times when there are less demons, when Krishna or when religious principles become strong and demons go to other places. Now we have the situation in today's world on this planet where the, the collective karma of the people brings about more and more births of demons in the world. As people become more sinful, the karma of the planet, because each planet has a particular standard of karma. So this is a middle planet, therefore as Prabhupada says, it's, it's meant to be a balance between pious activities and sinful activities. It's somewhat in between. And you have the lower planets which are mostly sinful, and then you have the higher planets which are very pious and, you know, auspicious. But the middle planets, they have a balance. But then again, the middle planets can also get unbalanced. As people become more Krishna conscious, it becomes like a heavenly planet. And as people become more sinful, it becomes like a lower planet. So today, you see in today's world, there's so many problems. It's all due to the demons. <laughs> and they take the position of, you know, political posts or any you know, they they peer into all all sectors of society to somehow to usurp 
the energy of the Lord and create problems for everyone. So this is the demons. And Prabhupada said, the demons are always disturbing. But he said, don't worry, Krishna will protect you. We have the example here. Um, um, Swayam Bhuvamano, he's in trance. He doesn't even know he's about to become, you know, somebody's dinner. And, uh, but Krishna, he sees Krishna's in the heart and he knows everything at all times. And when it comes to his devotee, he is uh, Raki Krishna Mori K, Mori Krishna Raki K. Uh, if Krishna wants to protect you, there's nothing can have can harm you in any way. Nothing, zero. Even if somebody puts a gun to your head, they can't kill you. <laughs> there was one devotee. Uh, this was in the Ukraine <laughs> during the war, the recent war in the Ukraine. Uh, one devotee was captured by the the Russian army, and uh, they uh, he was a, somewhat of a leader amongst the devotees. I can't remember his name. Naranjan Swami was telling me, this to, huh? Abhinandan, yeah, you know. Yeah, they had him and then there was one, they were going to, I don't know what led up to the situation, but they had the gun at his head and they were going to, you know, finish him off. And uh, he was, he started to pray to Radharani, seriously praying for Radharani. And then another Russian soldier came over and said, ah, don't waste your bullet, come on, there's some girls over here. So they went to do something else. I don't want to talk about that, but anyway. <laughs> so this is, you know, this is what happened. So by praying to Srimati Radharani, uh, he was protected. And somehow or other, he managed to, he, he got out too. He escaped somehow by Krishna's arrangement. So devotee, as long as we take shelter of Krishna, but taking shelter of Krishna means having faith that Krishna will protect you. Sometimes that faith is not there. And if the faith is not there, it's hard to take full shelter. And when the, when, because taking full shelter of Krishna is not something you just do when there's, there's some apparent danger, because as it says in this world, padam padam ya vi padam. It's always dangerous. At any time, one can lose their life. Any time. Even in an apparently nice situation, there was one young man in one college. He was coming to our Krishna consciousness uh, satsang we were having at the college. And um, one day he decided not to come and decided to go to a party. Young man, no history, no history of any illness. In fact, he was the top graduated in the medical college in Bombay. And he went to a party, and when he was in the party, he was dancing. And at one point, his heart stopped, and that was it. 23 years old, no history of any medical problems, top medical student in the whole college, and that was it. So, you know, we live in such a dangerous situation. To be in the material world means to be always in danger. It's just the way it is. And therefore one should always be taking shelter of Krishna, thinking about Krishna and praying for Krishna's mercy. But even if you forget Krishna, somehow Krishna doesn't forget you. <laughs> Krishna doesn't forget you. But still, don't take a chance. <laughs> always remember Krishna like that. Because by doing that, then nothing in this material world it becomes as Prahlad Maharaj says, Prahlad Maharaj is a prime example of one who is not only uh, always taking shelter of Krishna, but his father was such a powerful demon, Rani Kashipu, and he had devised Jai Shisi Pancha Tattva Ki Jai. He had devised so many ways to try to kill his little uh, Hare Krishna's son. But he couldn't. And he was amazed, shocked, incredulous. How is it? What are, where do you get your power from? And Prahlad was just simply absorbed in thinking of Krishna. 
And because he was absorbed, nothing could touch him. They tried everything. I mean, they threw him in boiling oil, they threw him off a mountain, stabbed him with pitchforks, administered poison. It's also mentioned they used Brahmins to chant, you know, evil mantras that would kill him. So many things they tried. But it, not even a hair on his head, head was disturbed. <laughs> That's Krishna. He's, he's all-powerful. <laughs> but one should not take advantage of that and become less, what we say, attentive. Therefore, the, uh, the um, Padma Purana says, it gives a very strong statement how to live in this world. It says, what is the greatest anomaly? What is the greatest calamity? What is the greatest misfortune? And the word greatest is used in all three to forget the Supreme Personality of Godhead for one moment. Now that's pretty powerful. We think if I can remember Krishna, that's pretty good. But the but the says that if you forget Krishna even for a moment, you're in the most dangerous situation. <laughs> even Krishna says that. He said, I want to give my mercy to everyone, but people don't want my mercy. <laughs> they just don't want it. <laughs> so um, what can I do? <laughs> I like to give them my mercy. And he also does give them mercy, but the complete mercy is there for those who take shelter of Krishna. Like that. Like that. So whether you're, whatever material position you're in, you know, sometimes we might gauge our, our success in life by what situation we're in. You know, we might be, uh, you know, you might be, you know, I was looking yesterday, I saw some guys walking down the street that yesterday, and they had these big gigantic bodies with kind of muscles hanging all, out all over the place. And they were walking like, you know, don't get in our way, because you know we're, we're God, and this, I'm Krishna, and He's Balaram. You know, <laughs> so they were walking like that. And I was thinking, hmm, maybe some mosquito will come along and you know finish him off. You know, <laughs> you know, you you know I say, what can you do? <laughs> it's the material world, no matter. Who, what, who you are, or what material situation you created to somehow give yourself some protection. And there's no protection in this world except, you know, the lotus feet of the Lord. Or the lotus feet of the pure devotee of the Lord, which is as good as the lotus feet of the Lord. So devotees are always remembering Krishna. Of course, we don't always remember Krishna because we want protection. We, we remember Krishna because we want to develop our attraction for Krishna. And by remembering Krishna, we're associating with Krishna. And that attraction comes stronger as we associate with Krishna more and more by remembering Krishna in different ways. So that is the, that's the desire of the devotee. A devotee is not like thinking, well, I got, you know, I'm in a good situation, I'm young, I'm healthy, you know, I'm almost good looking, not quite, but almost. <laughs> I'm still working on it. <laughs> Uh, what else? <laughs> um, you know, I got I got friends who are influential. <laughs> I got money. My bicycle is the best. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, of course that that applies only to uh, two countries: uh, the Netherlands and Slovenia, <laughs> where bicycles rule. <laughs> I mean, we really rule here, anyway. But anyway, whatever you have or whatever you are, at least on the material level, it's not a, there's no stable platform. <clears throat> it's just the way this material energy is constituted. Therefore, one should always remember to take shelter of Krishna. You can say, Swayam Bhuvamano, he was chanting the mantras of the Upanishads which are the essence of the Vedas. And so in one sense, he was actually deep because the Vedas, Krishna is non-different than the Vedas. 
Vedaki, I think there's a name for Krishna that describes him as being Veda himself. He is actually Veda himself. And the essence of the Vedas are the Shrutis, and the Shrutis are mostly the four Vedas and the Upanishads are the essence of the Vedas. All other Vedic knowledge are also Vedas and non-different, but the essence of the Vedas is the Upanishads. <coughs> So Swayam Bhuvamano, he's, he's meditating on that and he's absorbed. And then these demons come along. <coughs> Excuse me. They're, it says they came along with great speed and ran after him. And then the Lord took note and then the Lord came. And it says here, what does it say here? He appeared. And what did he do? I killed the demons and the Rakshasas. It just doesn't tell you how he did it, but he did. And then the Lord took the post of Lord Indra himself. It's interesting, as we mentioned, it's simply a post. Well, Indra, the present Indra, his name is Purandara, for those of you who are wondering what's his name. His name is Porandara. He gets in trouble a lot. Did you notice that? Somehow or other. And when you have a big position and you have a lot of power and you have a lot of influence and uh, you have a tendency to sometimes become a little bit careless in the way you do things, thinking because we have these things, just like Indra. You know, he, uh, he didn't even recognize the Supreme Personality of Godhead who appeared as Krishna in Vrindavan. When Krishna stopped the Indra Yajna, Indra became offended. He didn't even know that this was the Supreme Lord himself. It's interesting. You would think Indra would know, but he didn't. And he was thinking, who's this talkative boy? He's just making trouble and he's ruining my worship. And therefore I'll take revenge. Not only did he try to take revenge, <laughs> Revenge. His revenge was practically on the level of the demons. Tried to kill Krishna, tried to kill the residents of Vrindavan, tried to destroy everything in Vrindavan. His pride became so inflated that he completely lost all sensibility. Indra gets in trouble like that. He, you know, somehow or other. And because there's another incident also where Indra was sitting in the midst of all the devas. This is in the sixth canto. And he's being worshipped so nicely by all the devas. And they're singing his eulogy. And they have the umbrella over his head. He's being fanned. So many, many, many glorifications of Indra. His wife, Sachi, is there. She's there. And guess what happens? his spiritual master, Brihaspati, walks in. He doesn't come in completely. He stops by the door. He looks in and he sees what's going on. Now all that Indra had to do was, Indra saw his, 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 his spiritual master. He's the spiritual master of all the demigods, including Indra. All he had to do was acknowledge the presence and offer some respect to his uh, spiritual master. He didn't do that. He didn't do that. He didn't even, he saw him and he just became more, be, just went back to being attentive to his worship. Brihaspati looked and said, hmm. And he, he noted that and in disgust he turned around and walked out. And then Indra realized after what a discretion and etiquette he, he made. And because of that, he tried to apologize. He wanted to find Brihaspati to, to make his apology, but Brihaspati wouldn't, wasn't available. He hid from Indra and Indra couldn't find him. And Indra was beside himself in anxiety. He wanted to you know, make up for what he had not done there's two ways that you can make mistakes. You can do the wrong thing or you can not do the right thing. 
It doesn't mean not doing the right thing doesn't mean doing the wrong thing. It means not doing the thing you're supposed to do and you don't do it. <laughs> like, for instance, paying obeisances. That, there are times we must pay obeisances, otherwise we're, we're in a wrong mentality. Like that. That's why obeisances is there, is to help acknowledge the devotional mindset or to express that mindset. So Indra, <clears throat> he's beside himself, and because of that, he couldn't find Brihaspati, and because of that, the demon, Bali, Bali Maharaj, he worshipped the Lord, I mean, he worshipped his spiritual master, Sukacharya, really nicely. He became powerful, the demons became powerful, and they simply marched into the heavenly planets and took over. The, the demigods had no power to fight. Why? Because of the offense of Indra. They had lost the mercy of their spiritual master. When one loses the mercy of the spiritual master, Shrama Evihi Kevalam, you can't do anything. <laughs> and when you have the mercy of the spiritual master, then and the door to, to all good fortune is wide open. So one should seek that mercy. And of course, there's an etiquette that it must be there. Indra didn't follow that. And all the demigods had to suffer, not just Indra. Indra's the leading demigods. The other demigods didn't do anything wrong, you might say in one sense. But they also had to suffer because of the leading demigod didn't act properly. And then what happened? Not only were the, uh, yeah, the demigods were defeated, they simply gave up because they couldn't fight against Bali at the time. Bali was self-effulgent. And then, of course, then the whole thing transpired and then the whole story of Vichrasura and it's a really wonderful pastime. But Indra, he's always making mistakes. So sometimes people think, well, let me have a big post. You know, I want to be in charge. You heard of that? I mean, nowadays it's not so so much. When I first joined the Hare Krishna movement, everyone wanted to be a temple president. Everybody. And they would fight amongst it. And we were in Chicago in 19, I forget what year it was, 1970 something. And there was a need for a temple president in Chicago. And so three devotees wanted it. Uh, Govinda Dutt, uh, what's his other's name? I can't remember his name. Uh, three devotees wanted it. And they were all, you know, vying for the position. Because, you know, if you were a temple president, hey, you get to meet Prabhupada. And you can talk to Prabhupada about what's going on in your temple. You know, you get Prabhupada's association. You know, you were important. You know, TP, that means top <laughs> and uh, so uh, one of them obviously one of them got it and the other two left the temple and went out and started their own temple <laughs> really yeah yeah Prisha Kapi was the other one he, he started a not temple they started preaching centers and started to you know manage the preaching center they couldn't tolerate the fact that they weren't going to be temple president, so they started their own. And it was good because <laughs> it spread Krishna consciousness <laughs> in that sense. But that was 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 like everybody everybody wanted sannyas. Prabhupada said to one to to Jai Bhattaka Maharaj, why do all the men want to get sannyas? <laughs> now it's a little bit different now. And Jai Bhattaka Maharaj said well, they want to be free, <laughs> not to have to listen to anybody, you know. <laughs> but that's not the reason. It does. You have to listen to Krishna or else you get smashed. But the, high, the more important, we might use the word important, quote-unquote, your position is, the more likely you will get reactions if you don't fulfill that position. Yeah. It's just like in the family. If there is a young child, they do something wrong. It's not so wrong because they ex it's expected. But when the older child, the grown-up child, who's been instructed by the parents, they do something wrong, 
the reactions are more severe. <laughs> like that. So nowadays, nobody wants to be temple president. <laughs> well, there's, a, there's a couple Inskan humorist stories where it says that there was one donkey, you know, he's a jackass. And so he's walking along and he's like this, and he's walking. So one person comes up to him and says, Mr. Jackass, would you like to be temple president in Iskan? <laughs> and then there's another one, there's another story. If you don't like that one, this one might be even better. <laughs> so there's one Moni Baba, he doesn't speak. He's been silent for years. So they come up to him and say, Mr. Baba, would you like to be temple president in this country? No! <laughs> You know, I've had association with temple presidents, and, and one temple president said, you do nine things right, and you do one thing wrong, and that's the thing they remember. <laughs> you can do so many things right, but if you do one thing wrong, everybody thinks, boy, he's a bad temple president. <laughs> they don't account for the other nine things that are good, you know. <laughs> so we should appreciate our temple president. <laughs> Because, you know, it's not an easy position. It's very difficult. It's rather than waiting for him to do something wrong, you should try to help him so he doesn't do anything wrong. <laughs> that's the idea. <laughs> Giving support. And that's true with any position like that. So, it, there's a great responsibility when we take positions. And therefore, positions should be supported by the rest of the devotees in order to make things go on nicely, like that. Yeah, so, uh, how did I get on this subject again? I forgot. <laughs> all, all the for Indra's mistake. Oh, and yeah, the, the position, yeah. So, Indra, Indra, because of Indra's mistake, all the demigods had to get a reaction to, and they all lost their positions in the heavenly plan, at least temporarily, anyway. So, yeah, and then here, where you find that uh, uh, the Yajna Pati, he became, who was the Supreme Lord himself, he actually became Indra to take over that uh, situation. And there are many examples. When Indra was away, after he had, uh, under the guidance of the Lord, he had killed... Uh, Richard Sora, he killed a Brahmana. And therefore he had to suffer the reaction of Ramahatya. Although it was his duty to kill the demon and he was being supported even by the Lord, still there was a reaction for him from killing a Brahmana. So he had to live uh, well, for one year in the stem of a lotus flower and it was in water, and he couldn't eat. And so he wasn't able, he had, he had a, practically a whole year, he wasn't even able to eat. And during that time, his wife was being attacked by the person who took over the demigod position. I forgot his name. What was that person's name? He took the position of Indra, and then he chased after Indra's wife. No. Nahusha, right, right, Nahusha. Later, Nahusha became a snake. <laughs> yeah, he actually became a snake. But, uh, yeah, so Indra's wife was in trouble because her husband was gone. And uh, this, this just goes on. And I, so sometimes people think, well, let's go to the heavenly planets. It's nice up there. But then again, you never know. All the, all the intrigue goes on. And then the demons are there attacking sometimes, too. So, and Prabhupada said something, and this is very sad to hear, he said it a couple times. He said, many of my disciples will attain Swargaloka. You heard that before, huh? 
It's a sad statement. That means uh, we won't make it back to Godhead. We'll get. We'll become demigods or demigoddesses in the higher planets. That means we've performed pious and devotional activities, but we haven't reached the stage of you know elevation to the platform of devotional service. So be careful. Don't waste time. You don't want to become a demigod. <laughs> it's not an easy position. And there's some enjoyment there. In fact, some of the children in our movement who are here with us today, are many of them are former demigods or demigoddesses. They have come into this movement because uh, they're coming to assist Lord Chaitanya's movement in spreading Krishna consciousness. So even the denizens of the higher planets take birth in this movement because they know it's a quick way back home, back to Godhead, this movement, because it's, it's orchestrated by Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. I was in the Rijeka temple in Croatia. There was a problem there. Uh, the children in the temple, they were coming to the Sunday feast and they were just running around and doing anything and none of the parents were taking care of the kids. So there was some complaint, you know, we got to discipline the children. But the, but the parents said, we can't discipline them because they're demigods and demigoddesses and they've come. <laughs> and so they're even more exalted than we are. So, um, you know, we, we might commit offense if we, you know. <laughs> so, of course, that wasn't quite logical. But <laughs> even your demigod is child, you still need some discipline sometimes. <laughs> so it's an interesting movement. If you want, if you want to have fun, become a Hare Krishna. It's, this is this is where all the action is. The material world is completely boring. <laughs> okay, so any questions, comments? Yes, you want to become temple president? Is that the question? <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, thank you for inspiring lecture. Um, could I please ask if we commit mistake um, in Krishna consciousness, um, how do we um, apologize for it in a way that we are excused? So how, how to excuse for a mistake and how do we know that we are excused for a mistake? Well, mistakes are not defined in the same way in spiritual life. If you're sincerely trying to serve and there's some mistake in the way you serve, it's not... I mean, you, may, you could apologize and immediately it's automatically rectified simply by recognizing you made a mistake and apologizing. But when you commit offenses, then it's a little... Then, it's a little, then you have to really make some effort to overcome the reactions of the offenses by apologizing and offering to do devotional service like that. Uh, so, uh, what is that verse? Um, uh, oh, Krishna speaks it in the Bhagavad Gita. 9.30? Huh? Apichet Suracharo. Bajate mam ananyaba sadhu eva samanta vyag vavyasa hi so hi sa. That even if my devotee commits the most abominable action, if they're engaged in devotional service, they're still considered to be saintly. So stay in devotional service, apologize for your mistake, sincerely regret the fact that you did it, and go on in your devotional service. Like that. Devotional service, it's not about punishing people for mistakes. It's about purifying them and learning and teaching them how to come up to the standard of becoming fixed in devotional service. So we all make mistakes. There are four, uh, what we say, deficiencies in the conditioned soul, and one of them is to make mistake. So as long as one is still in the condition, uh, you know, 
we still make mistakes. But be careful, because some mistakes are more costly to others. Like I was, I remember we were dressing the deities in New Vrindavan. This was like when I first joined back in the 70s. Prabhupada was still here. And one devotee was dressing Jagannath. And so we had to move the deities from one place to another. So he picked up Lord Balaram to move him and he dropped him. Whoa. <laughs> I mean, just the thought of that is just so, you know, horrible to think about it. And that devotee, of course, he was sorry. He didn't really want, uh, you know, he made the mistake, but he was careless. Because of being careless with deities, this is where you really get reactions if you make mistakes in deity worship. Because you can't, with the deities, you have to be very, very conscious and very careful. Whether you're cooking or whether you're doing uh, puja on the altar in any form, mistakes are more severe there. <laughs> They're more severe. So they therefore be very careful. And that devotee had a lot of spiritual problems, or, I mean a lot of problems after that happened. His devotional life was really turned upside down for a while. So you have to be really careful, especially in deity worship. But if you make a mistake, apologize like that. And try not to make the mistake again. Because it's not like we can just somehow make a mistake and then think, well, I, I'll apologize, I'm sorry, but then you do it again. Prabhupada said, once, we can forgive you. Twice, hey, what's going on? I will forgive you. Three times, rascal. <laughs> <laughs> so in other words, you know, you could be forgiven even twice, but... It's not, a pro, it's not the policy to continue to try to learn from our mistakes. And, but we are conditioned souls, so we, we will work on force of habit. So sometimes out of habit, we have a tendency to do the wrong thing again. So be careful. Huh? You're, therefore, we have to control our habits by creating a good habit like that. So just like paying obeisances, we should practice that regularly. You can't pay enough obeisances. <laughs> it's not like, well, I did my quota for today. Raghunath Das Goswami was paying obeisances 1,000 times to the devotees every day and 1,000 times to the deities every day. That was his... Uh, that was his... Uh, you know, austerity every day, two thousand obeisances. So if you're if you're if you're you know if you're always paying obeisances, you can't do anything wrong because you're always down. You know, <laughs> if you just stay there. You know, you you know, you're in a good position. <laughs> so you know, it's really it, it's important that we learn that mood. And that way there's less chance of committing offenses and making mistakes like that. It's the, our activities are not ritualistic. Just like when we offer flowers to Srila Prabhupada, sometimes I see the devotees, they pick up the flower and they just go... <laughs> they're looking at something else, you know. <coughs> Prabhupada's there. You're offering him a flower, offer him a flower. If I offer you a flower and you're sitting there and I just go, here, and I got something else to do. Here's some flowers because you, you know, you look nice and I hear some. <coughs> no, so, you know, we have to be attentive. That there's where you will not make mistakes. When you're attentive to everything you do. Inattention causes mistakes and inattention causes uh, mm. Just like there was one devotee, this was in Croatia, I won't, I won't mention his name. He, uh, he was preaching, he was traveling on the coast during the summertime and he was preaching, distributing books, brahmachari. And then uh, he was living, he was, but the mistake was he was doing everything by himself. He was out on his own just doing it. So one day he was on his computer 
and he pushed the wrong button. <laughs> Adibo. <laughs> so I'm not telling you what button he pushed, <laughs> but certain websites came up that were, you know, very licentious. And his mind immediately, somehow or other, looked. And just by looking, uh, you know, he, he was so disturbed in mind that it, he couldn't get over it. It, was, it lasted so long. I mean, he, and he came to me, told me the whole situation. He was still disturbed. And this was like weeks and weeks and weeks and weeks. Just one look at something wrong, something sensual. His mind was completely disturbed for a long And that, it's, you can't say, well, that's his, you know, that happens to everyone. Even Prabhupada said, I'm sitting on the plane I'm, and they have all these movies. He said, sometimes I'm looking at these movies and I'm getting disturbed by the, what I'm seeing, you know. So, you know, we have to be careful. Being attentive in Krishna consciousness is the foundation for moving forward. And, yeah, yeah. So always be attentive and there's a less likely you'll make mistakes. Be very attentive. Yeah. Okay, is there anything else? <laughs> yes, uh, Adi. Mm -hmm. Hare Krishna. Uh, you mentioned uh, Indra's followers who suffered for his mistake. Demigods, yeah. Demigods. So, um, what is the logic? Because uh, be, what is the logic behind such a collective karma? W um, because it seems that they, they it happens all the time, even in the material world. I can tell you at least three stories. Well, we, of course, when. Uh, when uh, Lord Nityananda came to Ramachandra Khan, the one who offended Haridas Thakur, he offended Lord Nityananda by not, when Lord Nityananda came and he announced his arrival, his, his disciples came to Ramachandra Khan and said, Lord Nityananda come. He was a governor, uh, but he said, oh, Lord Nityananda, he can stay in the cow shed. Lord Nityananda heard that. He laughed. But his laughter was an expression of his anger. He laughed in anger. Immediately he left. Right after that, the, uh, the uh, superior of the governor, he came. And he came and he just ravaged the whole place. He put the governor in jail, took all his property, uh, killed a cow, and everybody in the village, in that area, also their property was ravaged. They had to suffer also. Because they were connected with that, with that governor. Yeah. So, I, I, I do not doubt that it works, but uh, it, it seems uh, somewhat unfair if they didn't do the mistake. So why do they share the punishment? I'll tell you another story. <laughs> no, I know it works. I know it exists. I'm I, asking about the... Uh, causality there. If you're associated with, that's why association can also cause you to go down even though you didn't do anything. This is like when a, when a whole bunch of people rob a bank. You know, the guy who's driving the getaway car, or maybe the guy who's sitting back at the house waiting for the money to come. He didn't do anything. He's, in, he's also implicated in, in the whole thing. So it's just the way it is. Uh, you get implicated in a wrong activity. You get implicated in a right activity too. When if you're associating with devotees who are doing nice devotional service, you get that you get benefit from that because of the power of their devotional service. Because you're in that association. Yeah. You want to hear another story? This one's really even even more scary. <laughs> I was in. Uh, Adikeshiva Temple in uh, Trivendam, is it? Yeah, yeah. yeah, near Trivendam. And so we spent some time there. We actually chatted the whole Brahma Samhita, and it was really nice. So I met one of the Pujaris there, and he was telling me, we were talking, we just, he got it really. He said, many, many years ago, one of the Pujaris there, they started. They stole the deity's jewelry. <laughs> stole the deity's jewelry. He was doing it little by little. 
finally it was noticed that all the jewelry was gone. And then he was caught. And now he lived in the village nearby. And now everybody in that, right after that, because he lived in that village, that whole village had to undergo pestilence. And there was a drought. All their crops were burnt up. And they all, everybody in that village had to suffer because that Pujari lived in the village. He told me that, I mean, directly. <laughs> so, you know. You know, it's, I mean, you have to be careful. You know, who you associate with. You know, wrong association will get you in trouble. <laughs> Even though you don't do anything. You know, it's just the way, the power of association. Association is influential. Just like, you know, to use it in a very humorous way, they have these cardboard mannequins of presidents. They're made out of cardboard. It's the picture of the president. And so you can, uh, now you can go and pay some money and you stand next to that cardboard thing and they take your picture. And then you show your friends, look, I've been with the president, you know. Like, wow. It's not really the president, but it looks like it because they make these things really lifelike. <laughs> so, you know, and everybody thinks, whoa, he's, he's important, he got that. Yeah. So, you know, uh, if you're associating with a certain type of people, you know, and sometimes we say, tell me who you associate with and I'll tell you who you are. Now, that's a whole seminar <laughs> because we preach and we have to somehow or other be in the proximity of people who are undesirable. But we're not taking their association. We're trying to give them our association. So that's different. But in the case, course of preaching, if you become like them or become attracted to their association, then you'll also be affected by that. So association really means affection for. You develop affection for devotees who are advanced, that will make you advance. You develop affection for the non-devotees because they have some good qualities, then you will also become like that. <laughs> Yeah, it's just the way association is. So you have to be careful. So that's why Lord Chaitanya was really strict. Asat Sangha Tayaga E Vaishnava Achar. He didn't say it easy, he said it with force. Asat Sangha Tayaga E Vaishnava Achar. Give up the association of the non devotees, take to the association. This is the principle of success in devotional service. Sadhu Sangha, Sadhu Sangha, Sadhu Sastri Hoy. Lava Matta, Sadhu Sangha, Sarva Siddhi Hoy. Like that. But for preaching, we don't take their association. We're trying to give them something. That's the whole thing. But be careful. They might want to give you something also. Like I was doing some preaching and some, you know, it was like a rock concert. And we were out there. So everybody's drinking. And so, you know, they liked me. So one guy said, hey, he's a cool guy. Here, have a can of beer. So he gave me a can of beer. So I said, oh, thank you very much. I'll take it later. So I put it in my bag. And then when first chant I got, I got rid of it. Because I wanted to accept his offering. You know, he wouldn't, I was offered a joint at a different time. But, you know, they offer you joints or a can of beer. A joint is a, you know, marijuana stick, for those of you who are not hip to all that stuff, you know. <laughs> yeah, so, you know, you're out there, you never know. They Sometimes people want to give you something that you don't need, <laughs> you don't want, and it's dangerous. So you may somehow accept their, their offering, or else you could say, well, ex well, actually, you know, uh, thank you, but, you know, thank you for the offering, I appreciate it, but 
no thanks, you know. That's the easy, that's the, that's one way to do it. <laughs> Be careful. <laughs> Sadhu Sangha, it's very, association is very, very important. That's why Madhavendra Puri, he didn't associate with anyone when he, because he was thinking if I associate with somebody, we will talk about something that is not Krishna conscious. <laughs> So he, he remained alone. Yesterday I was talking to one devotee, he was telling me, yeah, he said I went out, you know, I went out on a holiday with someone and I wanted to do one thing and he wanted to do other thing and all we did was fight. <laughs> he said, I wish I went out alone, you know, I would have got more done and had more, you know, been more profitable. So be careful how you choose your association. It's important. Like that. Now, if you're very powerful, and then uh, you know, what is that? Teja sam rajo shire? It was a teja sam nado sai. Then, then you don't become affected by that. But don't think you're very powerful. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Like Lord Shiva, he can drink an ocean of poison, smoke ganja, but we can't do that. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay, anything else? All right, thank you very much. Srila Prabhupada, Kijai. Hare Krishna.